All right, more warning signs are popping up in the middle sector. Uh, one of the um, tells that an asset is now in the declining phase of its intermediate cycle is that RSI tends to uh, get deeply oversold or it embeds in the oversold condition. And that's what we're seeing here in, in the mining stocks. RSI is starting to uh, get deeply uh, embedded in the oversold condition. Uh, you notice the difference here during the advancing phase of this intermediate cycle. Um, price bounced very quickly once it got oversold into this uh, minor correction. So this this was a buying opportunity here. This is not a buying opportunity at this point. At, at this point, this is a signal that we're in an intermediate decline. So. You know, as I keep saying, you, you've got to quit listening to these perma bulls um, telling people that uh, metals are, are, you know, gold is going to the moon any day now. It's going to, we're going to get this huge, you know, massive trending move to the upside, which, which we will. But at this point, I think I'm about 99% convinced we're in the declining phase of the eight year cycle. So we've got to finish that before we can get that. Uh, moonshot that everybody's looking for and uh, there's a, a very good chance that it, it may be a, another even as much as another year before that's done so now let me switch over to gold all right so <clears throat> here's here's our problem um, this was the first daily cycle right here gold really needed to test this intermediate top during this first um, daily cycle. I've noted this before in a, in a, in a bull phase or in the, well, in a bull market, then uh, the first daily cycle will usually recover all of the losses during the previous intermediate cycle decline. And, and clearly that did not happen during this first daily cycle. Gold uh, couldn't even get through this resistance zone. Then uh, the second daily cycle, and this is where the, uh, the perma bulls uh, really started to pound the table on that parabolic move, you know, any day now in gold. Um, the second daily cycle did break out above this resistance, but it did not go above this intermediate high. So another big red flag, um, you know, clearly moving down into uh, a daily cycle low here. So the second daily cycle also could not break above this intermediate high. The odds of a third daily cycle doing it, very, very slim. And, uh, and even if it uh, did, um, as I've noted before, breakouts that occur late in the cycle don't tend to produce sustained moves. So little hope at this point, I think, for uh, even a test of this intermediate high, much less a breakout and a sustained move higher. And I don't, don't think we're done with this daily cycle decline yet. We've we really need to break this daily cycle trend line, which it's it's tried about three times to do. So I suspect at some point here this week, it's going to do it. Um, go to break through this and close below that trend line. Uh, my my best guess is that maybe this this daily cycle bottoms on this intermediate uptrend line right here. But this this trend line is going to break also. But I. I think what might happen, um, let me see if I can just draw this in. All right, this is kind of my best guess. Um, sometime this week, we're going to break this trend line. Maybe we just come down and test this intermediate trend line, and then we get our, our daily cycle low. Remember, this, this daily cycle is right translated, so I'm not really expecting it to drop below this um, first daily cycle low and then we get a bounce and then the uh, the, the perma bulls you know start again start calling for uh, this you know parabolic move but it's just very unlikely to happen during a third daily cycle more often than not a third daily cycle is going to left translate which means it'll rally just enough to push the RSI up here to overbought and then instead of embedding or getting heavily overbought Price will immediately turn back down. The cycle will left translate, uh, come down, break this uh, daily cycle low, give us a failed daily cycle, and then come down and uh, give us uh, our intermediate cycle low. 
uh, this takes time. Um, any, it can take anywhere from five to, to six more weeks. So this, this is not going to be an easy process. It's not going to be easy to make money on the short side. You're going to lose money on the long side, you know, unless you're just really nimble and can, you know, manage to catch the exact bottom of this daily cycle low and then get out before the daily cycle tops and left translates. Just very, very difficult market to make money in. This, this whole thing has been very difficult this entire year to make any money, any sustainable money in, in uh, metals. Uh, what's happening is is you make a little bit and then you lose it and then you make a little bit and then you lose it. It's just um, very, very difficult to time these uh, gyrations uh, in metals. And I suspect this is going to be the same thing. Um, I'm guessing that probably what's going to happen is uh, gold's going to come down here and maybe we get a marginal uh, break below this this pivot, kind of what happened to a silver. And remember that was our, our buying signal in silver was that marginal undercut of support and then reversal. I'm thinking probably the same thing's going to happen here during the intermediate cycle lows. We'll get another, we'll get, you know, one of these marginal undercuts. Maybe, you know, we only go to 1660 or something like that. And then we reverse and that that's probably going to be your buy signal. But again, I doubt that we're going to make a higher intermediate high. I think we're going to come up short again. And so now let me switch over to the weekly chart. All right, here, here's the problem. Um, at, at this top here, gold was just stretched way, way too far above this 200 week moving average. And now it's, it's um, moving down into, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's moving down into a, a eight year cycle low. You can see um, this intermediate top came lower than this intermediate top. This intermediate top was not able to go uh, break above this intermediate top. And now it, it doesn't look like this intermediate top is going to make a higher high either. So I'm guessing we're going to continue this uh, very difficult uh, churn, you know, slightly lower, but mostly sideways and allow this 200 day moving average to continue uh, advancing and eventually catch up to price. So my guess is somewhere maybe in late 22, uh, gold is going to tag this 200 week moving average. Uh, and then that's probably going to give us our, our eight year cycle low, even though it, it will occur early. And I've said this before, um, uh, you know, if, if we get a normal cycle, then the eight year cycle low is going to occur in 2024. But I, I, don't, I think it's going to shorten. And the reason I think that is because the three year cycle low in the CRB is going to be due. It's going to be due out here in early 23, but gold usually bottoms a little ahead of uh, the stock market and ahead of the CRB. So I would look for uh, gold to bottom some here, somewhere in mid to late 22, um, slightly ahead of the major multi-year cycle low in the in the CRB and uh, and I think that's going to give us our eight year cycle low and it'll it'll come uh, you know maybe uh, a year year and a half earlier than what what we would expect so it'll catch some some people off guard here but but I, I think we're going to be stuck going sideways to maybe slightly down until this 200 week moving average can catch up to price and then at that point, I think that the handle part of this cup and handle pattern will be over. And then that is when we're going to get our moonshot. Um, right now, I think it's just too early. I, I think uh, we're just, we just got more to go. This moving average has got to catch up to price. And that is going to take more time, uh, especially if this continues chopping sideways like it's doing. Now, if, if we were to have a big scary plunge down to this um, 200 week moving average, maybe, you know, during the next five to six weeks, then I could make a case that, that that is the final eight year cycle low. And now we're ready for the moonshot, but I doubt that's going to happen. I think we're just in a, in a very difficult sideways to slightly downturn. And uh, that is allowing the 200 week moving average to kept, catch up to price. And that, 
at, at this rate anyway, it's going to be sometime in mid to late 22 before that happens. So um, you just you don't want to you don't want to get drawn in by these analysts, you know, predicting gold to the moon. Yes, it will go to the moon, but first we have to finish that eight year cycle low. So you're going to have to be patient. And this is go going to give you an opportunity to buy silver, physical silver, cheaper than you can get it right now. So uh, I think same thing with silver. Got to come down and test this 200 week moving average. So that's I'm, you know, I've, I've got literally I've got a ton, a physical ton of um, silver, of actual physical silver. I would like to make that two tons. But right now I'm waiting uh, for the eight year cycle low and maybe a, a tag of this 200 week moving average. And then I'm going to add a lot more to my uh, my physical holdings of silver in preparation for the next eight year cycle, I think, is where we get that insane move in metals. I think gold's gonna, minimum going to go to seven thousand uh, dollars. As I've said many times in the past, uh, $100 silver is a piece of cake. $200 to $500 silver isn't out of the question during that last six to eight weeks where silver just goes insane to the upside like it did in, in 1980. So that I believe that is coming, and I want to get prepared for it. Uh, but right now is not, not the time to do it. We're going to get our opportunity to buy silver cheaper, so some patience. Uh, and don't waste that opportunity. Uh, if we get a tag of this 200 week moving average sometime next year, that is your opportunity to, to load up on physical silver for the next five to eight years because um, silver is is going to produce, uh, I think, one of the largest bubbles uh, in history. And, and next year, you're going to get your, your opportunity Get positioned and prepare for that move.